want to become involved in the community. And the third argument is the instrument of empowerment that, gives, that language gives you. Now, moving on to the fourth argument. Language can be a serious barrier. And we've seen in a lot of countries where migration has become a problem that we have problem with segregation because people are reluctant to integrate in the society. And because they do not have skills, do not have language skills or working skills, they, uh, they are reluctant to, become, uh, to communicate with the citizens. So they form small communities. For example, uh, we have the Mexicans in the USA that have their, their community, and they refuse to speak English. They speak in Spanish. For example, in Romania, we have a problem with the Hungarian community in which they refuse to speak Romanian. And that's because there are so many in a small place, and no one actually takes any action. So that, that is how we have a barrier. And this means that we are actually perpetuating the difference between citizen and migrant and resident. And this is not a good thing. We already have a gap in our society. And we cannot continue with that because we are not evolving. When people do not get along, when people do not understand themselves, we cannot move for a functional society. So that means that we will increase the gap. Now moving on to the second argument, the language is a vote of trust. Well, when you apply for citizenship, that means that you want to become involved in the community's affairs. And that means that you are proving the state that you are capable of integrating. That means that you are proving the state that won't be an impediment for the development of the country. And because language is so important in order to, to work, in order to study, in order to do so many things, you will prove that you are ready to integrate. Because integration is an important thing when talking about this. So that is how you, sh you say that you appreciate that country and you want to become uh, integrated in the community's affairs. And that is when you sign the social contract with, uh, contract with that country. You give all your means of protection and rights for that, uh, for that state to protect you. That means that we'll, with rights, you will have some obligation also. And this leads me to the instrument of empowerment. Here, we see that language will be for you an instrument to actually uh, develop. It's an instrument that will help you manage on your own. You won't need anyone to translate you. That means that you will, will do all the things that you want. And let's see what citizenship gives you more than as a migrant. Well, it gives you the right to vote. It gives you the right to participate in elections, such, such things that you have to participate in political affairs. And why it's so important that you should know the language? Well, you have to know who you will vote. You have to know who will, you will sustain the elections. That we are giving you the right to make a change. Because yes, citizenship can make a change. They have become, they are the, they are the most important resource of a state, and they are the ones that can decide what the government does, what the, what the actions that it takes, uh, they will do. So yes, we say that if you know the language, you can do that. And it's important to know that. Now, at the end of the day, what are the benefits? Well, we will say that if you, if you impose this, uh, if you impose this test people will be forced to know the language. And that is good for them, because they can integrate, they can, uh, they can communicate, they can find better jobs. Now, for us, it's better. This, this is a good thing, that we know that these people want to become involved in the community's affairs. We know that these people are interested and want to make a change. So for us, as a society, as a whole, it's a good thing. And for the state, it's good that they know that we have a community that is united, that doesn't have segregation inside of this one stop discrimination, of discrimination, of segregation, and that is how we will do it. Now, at the end of the day, we say that, yes, this language test is a must, and it's the most important thing that we should pass in order to become a citizen. Thank you. Are you ready for the cross-examination? Sure. 
so first I want to ask you, what do migrants actually do when they move in these countries where they go? In well, their destination countries? Well, some of them go to work, some of them go to study, so it depends. Most so of them go to work. They work. And can we consider the fact that they work as a source of contribution for the countries where they actually go? An economical contribution, yes. So uh, anyway, they contribute to the economy of the country with what they do. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, so you say that migrants don't want to study the language. Well, some of them don't because they do not want. Some of them are illegal. Some of them want to stay in their uh, comfortable room and choose to speak in their own language. Uh, but yet, you think that it is only the migrants' fault that they don't uh, learn the language. Like, I want to ask you one thing. Are you, uh, do you know what's the amount of migrants that work uh, as farm workers in the US? What's the percentage, migrants and natives? I don't see the point. Uh, are you aware that like the farm workers in the United States, 80% of it is composed of migrants? Uh, illegal or illegal? Uh, Le uh, mostly illegal, and with it, do you think that a migrant working on a farm, mostly with migrants, is able to learn the language and has someone from whom he can learn the oh, language? Yeah, yeah. For example, in Sweden, there are special programs for that the migrants, which represent 15 percent of the country population, they are incentivized to learn the language. So yes, if you want to say that they are helped, well, I prove you that throughout some examples, the state does something for them. So on the farm, uh, while working, I don't know, eight hours a day, the migrant will have, in the same time, uh, a deal to learn the language. Well, actually, if I he has, if he is not surrounded with U.S. citizens, with people who actually speak English, but with I don't see actually Spanish. the point. If that farmer doesn't want to become a citizen, he isn't obliged to that. If he wants, that's a must, and we say that he should learn the language. If he doesn't, then he can remain a migrant. But if he wants, and like you said, he works, so he co contributes to the society, why shouldn't he be given a chance? Mm -hmm. Well, he, he will be given a chance and if he knows the language. And what happens in Switzerland? Switzerland, as you know, has three official languages, like Italian, Spanish, uh, Italian, like uh, French, and German. Right. What will migrants then have to do? And we know that even the citizens don't know all the three languages. It doesn't matter. They have to know one of the languages. If, if that's your concern, then they will learn learn one of the languages. And do you think that Switzerland functions fine, although... Yes, it does. As far as I know, country. they have a better economy than uh, most of other countries. Canada too, with... With two languages? Yes. Well, if you stay near Quebec, you will learn French. If you stay in the other side, you will know English. Thank you.
Dear judges, dear opponents, dear my team, we differ from the negative team today stands is that there are different types of citizens. Citizens who actually gain citizenship by being born in that country, and citizens who gain citizenship, uh, they were previously migrants who gain citizenship by the things that, uh, by, by their, by their uh, contribution to the country that they have made. And here the negative team stands and says that knowing the language doesn't contribute to the, uh, to the country. Working in the country uh, contributes to the economy to the country. Giving, uh, paying taxes contributes to the economy to the country and not knowing the language. And this is why I believe that these people who get citizenship for contribution doesn't need to know the language. So in order to prove our side, I'm going to first revile their case and then move on to my case. So first of all, the, their plan. They're trying to explain you that they will, they will, they will have, uh, they will have a, a language language test. They never explain which line, uh, how, uh, on what level will the language test be. Some migrants may know the, the language more than others, and some migrants more, more, may know the language less than others. That that means that some of them, that that means that some of them have advantage uh, against the others. So this plan does not stand and they haven't defined what actually they're going to do with their plan. So moving on to their first to the first argument, they're saying that language is a serious barrier. They say that language where people uh, can do not know, uh, that, that society where people do not know the language cannot, cannot work and cooperate. Well, first of all, we have numerous examples. For example, Mexicans in America. Mexicans work. Mexicans pay taxes. Mexicans contribute to the economy of the country, and yet Mexicans don't know the language. Mexicans contribute to the economy. Mexicans move the economy flow, develop, move the development of the country, and this is a society that works well because they're contributing and the country is developing. Another example is California. California right now has so many Latin people who actually don't know the language, speak in Latin language, and even the administration started to speak in Latin language, and this is very normal for the society, and people do not speak English, and California still is one of the most developed countries in America. So we see that a language isn't actually a barrier, but when the, when the people contribute to the economy of the state, and when people contribute to the society, that this is the thing, so why they need to get a citizenship? Moving on to the, to the next argument, the language is the vote of trust. They say that uh, migrants don't want to learn the language. Well, we say this is not true. Migrants want to learn the language, but they're being re rejected by the natives because they have, a, because the 
difference between the rights of the natives and the migrants is very large and they have a gap of rights. This means they're be being seen as low class citizens and they're being seen and, and they're being rejected by the natives. And this is why they live separate in different communities where they understand each other. We're saying that migrants want to learn the language but they can't learn the language because natives don't let it. So if someone can't learn the language because they're not accepted, why shouldn't we give them citizenship if they do contribute to the economy? And moving on to the social contract. Well, social contract means that in order to be in the, so in the society, you have to provide something to the society in order for the society to give you some, the, the government to give you something back. Well, migrants don't know the language, but migrants contribute. They contribute to the, to the economy. They work the works, they work the jobs that the, the, that the natives don't want to work. They work the things that the natives, that the natives, the treaty jobs that the natives don't want to work. So they do contribute to, uh, to they do contribute to the economy. So this is why we believe that they should get, they do should, uh, should get the citizenship, the citizenship, and they do fill out the social agreement. So moving on to our case. See, I have shown you, uh, I, I have told you how we believe that according to the contribution that the, the migrants make to the country, they should get the, this citizenship. So what do migrants do and how do they contribute? First, there are low class migrants who, as I said, contribute to the economy by uh, by, by complementing the, the natives who don't want to work these treaty jobs, who don't want to work the industry jobs, which actually move the economy. And then there's this, and there, there's this low, uh, uh, high skilled migrants who actually, for example, Australia needs it so much and it's looking for them, they need scientists, they need uh, people in the agri agriculture. Maybe these people won't know the language, but these people are brilliant and can contribute to the development of this country. These people can contribute as well as the low class, as well as the low class migrants, the high class migrants can also contribute not only to the economy, but also of the development of, the, of, of that society. So this is why we believe they, they should know the language. And as we previously, as I previously explained, they know, they not know the language because they're being refused by the natives. And just because someone is being refused, and this is the reason that they don't know the language, we believe that these people should be given the right, should be given the citizenship. And when this, because they contribute, and when the citizenship will be given, they will have the equal rights, making them equal to the natives, giving them a chance for the, them not to be seen as low class citizens anymore, meaning that acceptance by the natives will be large, a large, a large uh, much larger, and with that communication will be uh, much more efficient. And with the communication, we believe that they will have the chance to learn the, the language of the state, but after they gain citizenship. But we believe that citizenship right now should begin on contribution. Moving on to, to, our, to, moving on to our, another argument is that the states, uh, what we're, we're trying to tell you, what about the states that actually have two languages or three languages? Look at Switzerland. Switzerland is a country that has three official languages, French, Italian, and Germany. Will migrants have to learn all of those three languages? Will migrants have to pass all of these three exams in order to, to work in, to, to get citizenship and to cooperate in the society? The another example is Canada, where they speak French and English. And speaking about these two states, these two states work in three different languages, and yet Switzerland is one of the most developed countries in the world. People don't know to, don't need to understand every human in the society, don't know, need to understand with each other in order to develop this country. The economy is flowing, the money are flowing, people are paying taxes, people are contributing to the society and people do respect the social contracts. Migrants, we are saying that migrants who respect the social contract, migrants who work, who pay taxes, should get citizenship because uh, they, they contribute to the economy. Thank you.
Could you please tell me what's the purpose of communication, please? Uh, well, the purpose of communication is to, in order to understand each other, people, in order to uh, provide. Can you, can you like rephrase the question? Okay, let's, su let's suppose uh, we must have this debate game, and okay. uh, I, I will going to speak in Romanian. Okay, would, this is a would that be helpful? Question, like we're talking about would that citizens be and not debates. Okay, citizens. There, you. I have a quote here when you said that uh, countries like Australia are in need for scientists or doctors who okay. don't know the language. So okay. you, you tell well, me that. Well, for example, Nikola Tesla didn't know the language. Okay, he so he invented how, electricity, uh, okay. and he didn't know the language, the English one, language. One, one small question. How can it's I be a doctor if I don't know the language? How can I tell someone what medicine he should take? Being a doctor, first of all, doesn't mean that you. Okay, let's forget that example. Let's focus so about the example. people. No, no, no. Let's focus about the people who actually didn't know the language and are doctors and did something for did something for society. Okay, they, they are, let's they let's are, think of Nikola they, Tesla. Let's think of. Do uh, you agree with me that they are doctors in their uh, native country? Because you can't be a doctor in another country if you don't know the language. Do you agree with me on that or not? No, I'm not agreeing. Really could on you that. please explain me how okay. to be a doctor in another? Okay, so I, uh, what I think that in order, to, if some country needs some kind of specialist that they don't have this special, for example, brain surgeon, that they don't have this specialist in their country, that it's much more important okay, for the okay, specialist to come in that country and thank get you. a translator Can I instead put of next losing. Question, okay. I understood. So, how do Mexican people contribute to the social life? How will Mexican people contribute to the social life? Yeah. Well, first of all, they will contribute to the economy. Social and life. Social life. Okay. Social life. Okay. You want strictly to, so, okay? Yeah. So Mexican people can contribute to the social life by providing their first of all Mexican culture and social life doesn't always needs to mean uh, speaking only with the okay. people of that state. It need it, it can mean speaking with the people of your own uh, of your okay. own kind. Okay. Are Mexicans being abused, segregated, and discriminated? Which Mexicans? The migrants or the citizen Mexicans? Uh, the migrants. The migrants, yes, there are. Okay. So how could they share their culture if they are discriminated? Well, how can and Chinese migrants share their culture and handicap all the, in America, Chinatown, where, uh, when they're being abused and their rights are being violated? Okay, so if you are a citizen, you can elect somebody, right? If you can, citizen, you can you vote, can. right? Um, yeah, sure, you can. Okay. So if you don't know the language, how do you vote? You but just pick wait, someone? Wait, are you saying that we, we should not be citizens, we should not give them to because they don't know the language? If we're talking about them, they wouldn't even know the history of the parties that they're voting for. This is a very ridiculous argument because what if they don't, what if they know the language where they don't know the history of the state and the history okay, okay. of the party? What is the need for more rights if you can't understand them and you can't use them? Can I answer? The need for more rights is in order to not be seen as low-class citizens and to be able to be accepted from the natives and to start communicating and learn the language. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And today, in the opposition, opposition is you. I'm number one. I'm number two of the proposition team. Now, today, we present present to you two points. False, ladies and gentlemen. I am Theodor. I have a name. I have a religion. I'm Christian. I have a belief. I'm a man with a face. I am not a number. Because just because I work, and just because I get money, and just because I have a salary, it doesn't mean I'm a man of society. It doesn't mean I'm integrated into society. It doesn't mean I help the society enough. It doesn't mean I even help the society at all. Yes, I bring money, but that's not enough. That's not what we want today. We don't want numbers on a list, numbers on a paper of people to uh, create people. We want, we have people. We have men, we have women, we have faces, we have beliefs, we have different cultures, we have different languages. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we stand for we stand today for a functional society. And we reach a functional society through the two points I'm going to present to you today. First of all, I'm going to rebuttal my, uh, our uh, the proposition's case. And, that, and second of all, I'm going to move on to the opposition's case and their plan, and their um, counter plan, namely no test granting citizenship as a whole without any, uh, without any problems. But first, before that, let's talk about the example. And the first point, they, talk, uh, they told us the example of Switzerland, Switzerland, which has three or four official languages. Well, ladies and gentlemen, yes, maybe we can fix some countries. Maybe some countries do have more official languages. But that's a special case. We're not, we can't fix everything for everyone, but we can fix things for 90% or 99% of the, the rest of the population of the world. We don't want to fix, we can't fix things for every single person in the world. We just want to fix for the most people we can. And the most countries have one official language, be it unique or not. And we say that in order to be a citizen, in order not just to be a citizen, in order to help the society evolve, function, and prosper, you need to uh, know the language. At first, ladies and gentlemen, in Sweden, after the uh, Swedish integration uh, model was applied, uh, Swedish children had a lot better uh, results at school and had almost the highest grade in school. Why? Because before that, there was, um, uh, in, there was a language barrier and a culture barrier. Without now, with uh, the Swedish integration model in, uh, in play, there is no more language barriers. Why? Because if you, apply, if you want to apply for citizenship, right now you, are, you can take free language courses. You are also helped by uh, the state in order, to learn, in order to learn the language. And as an example of a test, because they wanted to know what kind of test we can have. As an example, the USA has the YELTS. The Yelts beginner exam, for example, which gives an oral and a written exam for beginners. So that's not the problem. What we want to talk today today is the valorical, is the valorical type. Should we have a language? Should people be able to communicate? And I'm going to prove to you today how people must communicate in a society in order to get money and in order to function as a society as a whole. But first of all, they told us that Mexicans work for our country. They work and they, thus they contribute to society. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. How are stereotypes created? 
Well, they came because we do not know things, because of the unknown that we do not, uh, we have upon us. We created stereotypes for the Muslim people because we didn't know them. We didn't know them. They didn't know our language, we didn't know their language. So we couldn't talk to them, we couldn't socialize with them. So we segregated them. Yeah, they can talk between themselves, but just themselves, as we heard in the cross-examination, ladies and gentlemen. And we're telling you, as having little, little churches in the society for, uh, for every single minority group is not an efficient society. And as they, as they didn't tackle our, um, our criteria and our value, that means that they actually want a functional society. And we're telling you today, having differences and having stereotypes and having discrimination in the society will not create a better and functional society as a whole. Moving on to the second point. Um, but, but before that, uh, let's... Um, before that, why do we want we want people to have citizenship? It's simple because once you have once you're a citizen and once you know the language, you're no longer a pay a uh, number on a piece of paper. You're a man that you can and you can vote. You can go for a presidency and you can participate socially and politically. And we're telling you today. Uh, you don't need to know the history of Republicans to vote for Rep Republicans. That's why they have campaigns, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to the second point. It was that we shouldn't have this, and because Nikola uh, Tesla didn't know the language. Yeah, we're, well, we're not all inventors. We work in a firm, we work on a farm, and we need to communicate, ladies and gentlemen. Today, as debaters, if they were to talk Macedonian, we were to talk Romanian, how would the judges understand what we were talking today, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, we bring money to the society, but that's not enough. That's not enough for a functional society. That's not enough for a functional economy. That's not enough for a functional market in itself. Ladies and gentlemen, in the end, we're not alone in the world. We are with different cultures and different languages. Please understand understand that we must learn a national language law to create a national and um, functional society. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Where is speech credit? Oh. Okay, so the first question, can you explain me something a little about, about the free language courses? I mean, where did, they, did this exist? Well, in Sweden, for example, in the Swedish integration model, can they you speak uh, like little slower? Of course, in the Swedish integration model, they state that they can they can give you free language courses, and in the USA, for example, okay. they when, have, when you apply for citizenship, yeah, and they, they can they apply give you this free language if courses. you want to become a citizen. Okay, thank you. You can apply. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, uh, why do migrants? Uh, so, first of all, let, let, let's clarify something. Migrants have all rights on citizens, right? Yeah, they can vote or they can okay. become president. I don't know, but actually the other rights are labor rights, right? Like as in, they, as in they don't care, get medical care for the state, for example. I'm sorry, they get medical care from every state. Which state. Every legal citizen or every legal immigrant has no care and health care provided because he's legal there. An illegal immigrant doesn't have health care. Okay, they have what about one unemployment care. benefits? Do they have unemployment of benefits? Of course, legal immigrants in, in, every, state, state, in, every, single, in every single state. In Europe, for example, they have unemployment. All, all well, legal. Let, let me re okay, let me re rephrase the question. And yes. uh, about the Europe thing, did you know that Europeans only give uh, rights for the migrants for the members of the EU? I mean, the migrants which migrate from Germany to Italy or from I don't know Bulgaria then to Italy. That is false, man. People okay. from the USA also have unemployment there. People from Africa also have unemployment there, or health care provided in the European Union. All okay. legal migrants and all legal citizens. We actually disagree on this and we don't have any proof, so we're going to finish this. Well, so, so moving on to the voting thing. So are you saying that uh, if you know the language, then you certainly know which, one, which, which president you should choose to represent your country? Not necessarily. If you know the language, you can understand the, the campaigns. campaigns. Okay, let's talk about the campaigns of a little course. bit. So let's say the Republicans in the history did something pretty bad to the... Let's say some, some government was... The, okay, let's say that uh, I, some I think I got, I think I got no, no, some political party was an uh, ha, was a government. Bad. Yeah, there's something bad in the in the past, and right. these people don't know that no, this migrant don't know because of they course. do know the language, and they do see the campaigns, and the campaigns say that this political party did good. So how would you know the history well, of the political party? It's simple. That's why we're not a single party state. That's why we have Republicans and Libertarians. Yes, but this 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 example that I've told you can happen with every single party. 
well, of course, and every other rival party you will, of course, say, well, did they, the Republicans did not help these people in okay. the past. Okay, speaking about now the history of the, of the, the state, uh, of the parties, let's talk about the history of the states. How the migrants, even if they did know the language, how the migrants can, uh, uh, can tell what's best for the state if they don't know the history of the state, meaning the economical history of the state, the social history of the state. But state, they, they don't know the language, course, right? Of course. Well, a state is formed by the people people themselves have a unique goal, that of prosperity. And prosperity is not an altruistic view of I have, I need to okay, pay I, money. Okay, I assume you an answer. Okay. Yes, okay. because they have a common goal, they will, um, the common goal to prosper, the state will prosper if the society prospers. And if the they society want prospering meaning economic, okay, right? Time is up. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Three minutes. Uh, how many minutes do we have left? Uh, you have three minutes. speaker and the negative team today stands for a functional society. Stands for a society where people who are the citizens really do contribute to the society, who contribute to the economical development of the society, and we see the, la we see the language as not so important factor in when a, per a person contributes to one society, but what he does, whether he knows, uh, whether he contributes ec uh, economically to the society, whether he obeys the laws, because as we can see, legal migrants do go to the countries, they do obey the laws, 
uh, because they should be informed about the laws there, which means that they certainly do not break any rules of this country, and this is why they should be granted with citizenship, but why not because they do not know the language. So I'm now going to talk about three points in my speech. First of all, how are stereotypes created, and why do migrants do not know, uh, know the language when they get there? The second point is that uh, the, 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 about societies that function with, with more languages and how uh, also the societies with one official language can function with, uh, with people who do not know the language, but who will later l learn it. And I'm going to talk about the political parties and choosing of, of a party that will go to the government. So moving to the first point, what we uh, want to show you today is that actually it's not that the migrants do not want to, uh, to learn the language when they go there. What happens when the migrant goes there, as we are all aware, is that the migrants do have a, a lower a social and economical rights in the countries where they go. And even though these rights may be granted from some states, we can see the example with uh, in the USA that 80% of the uh, farm workforce are actually migrants. And the big person, about 20% of them do not enjoy the minimum wage, which means that we can see that they do not really enjoy uh, the same equal treatment as the natives. This makes these migrants see, be seen as the low class citizens of the society. And because they are seen actually as the low class citizens of the society, natives do not want to communicate with them because there is such a great gap in the rights of the migrants and the citizens. But what will happen if the migrants uh, gain citizenship not on the language, uh, not on the language factor, but also uh, on the, upon the factor of their contribution? What will happen, first of all, is that the migrant, even, do not, even though he does not know the language, he will have the same rights as a native because he will certainly become a native. So because if, he's, if he has the same rights, he will have uh, access to all of the institutions in the country which the native has. And this means that, first of all, he will not be seen as a low class citizen because he will have the same rights as the citizens. He will have uh, uh, access to every institution in the society, which means that, that, uh, that the natives will accept him uh, more, uh, faster than when he was migrant and did not have enough rights, which means that uh, they, he will be able to learn the language and start communicating with the migrants. This is how, uh, so we will have economical contribution, but also uh, without having the language set, a functional, uh, a functional society where the migrants can, uh, who will become citizens later, will learn the language. Moving on to the point, about the uh, about uh, more uh, lingual society, maybe maybe the affirmative team said that they may be uh, maybe isolated examples about Switzerland and Canada. But take a look at Switzerland. Switzerland, even uh, even though there is a small number of societies like that, there are three languages, and Switzerland is one of the greatest economy in the world today. Take a look at Canada with two languages, French and English, also one of the greatest uh, greatest. Uh, economies in the world today. We, we can take a look at the example of America. How was America created actually? America was created for migrants. Um, uh, we we uh, have seen examples in the history where 25 million Italians went to America. They were gained citizenship immediately without knowing the language. And now we have America, one of the greatest economy in the world today, which means that the language barrier is not the, the uh, is not really uh, the great uh, is not really a barrier for for moving one country and making a development in the country, but means that the contribution and the work that the, these migrants these migrants do is actually the factor why should they gain the citizenship, not only the language barrier. And to, to move on my third point about the political parties, what we have proven in the cross-examination right now is that, is that actually when even though, um, even, let's uh, make a uh, let's uh, think of a situation where a migrant knows the language and he gains the citizen citizenship. First of all, right now we, uh, we have, uh, we have to, um, uh, some parties who, uh, and there should be elections on this, uh, and there should be elections, but actually these, these parties make their own campaigns. When the migrant does not know the history of the political, uh, of none of the political parties, he does not know what these parties have done, and as we can see from the political co campaigns, what the political parties do is actually saying what the others have be have done bad, and the other also responds on that they say this have uh, they have done also something bad, which means the migrant cannot even know what has really happened to the both of the parties of or how uh, how many parties they are because they're uh, they're fighting all the time about who have done something better, who have something not, uh, done uh, something not really better, which means that the migrant cannot even know. Uh, does not even know the history and the language is not a request about uh, whether um, he, he should go to this political party or not. So because we have proven today, proven to, proven today that the language is not the real uh, barrier, but, but what really should be about the citizenship is actually have, uh, the contribution to the further matter, I begin to oppose the motion.
only the thing is that it's broken. Sorry. Sure. 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 Now, what I'm going to tell you today is that society is human interaction. Uh, I'm going to talk about the case philosophy, and after that, I'm going to talk about the uh, criteria that I found, which was interaction, which has uh, more sub points like discrimination, language, and countries with more languages. Now, let's start with the case philosophy. What did we want today? Today, our purpose was a functional society a functional country, and so on. What uh, they did, what they failed to do today is that they didn't make any link between economic, uh, between uh, economy and, fun uh, and functional uh, uh, society. There's no link because, uh, be between economy, uh, economy and functional democracy. Uh, now, moving on, what did they want to do today? They wanted more rights for the immigrants, okay? Uh, we think uh, that the immigrants want more, want more rights. It's okay. We never said that it isn't okay uh, for a migrant to have more rights. But let's see the difference between the migrant and the citizen, as uh, my colleague explained. A migrant has an economic interest, while a citizen has an economic interest and a social one. So if, they, if a migrant really wants and really needs that right, what should he do? She, uh, he should apply for being a citizen. And while applying for citizen, he must know the, langu uh, the language. And we think that this is not very hard to do because how hard is to find, uh, to learn a language while you're living in that country? Because uh, you have to buy, uh, to buy things from the shop and the shop is in English or in that language. Uh, you need to interact with, the, with your boss who might be native. You, need to, you may watch TV, which is in that language, and so on and so forth. So, and moreover, you have these programs that we've talked to you about, the, the programs that uh, help you uh, learn the native language. So it isn't a hard thing to do, and it is an essential thing to do, because you can't live in a country without knowing the language. It, it's absurd. Now, I want to say to you a contradiction, because they told us today that they want the, the same rights for both migrant and workers, but they don't want the migrants to vote. Oh, okay, so they first told us that uh, they want the same rights for both migrant and workers, and then they said that it's okay for them not to say, uh, not to know the language because they can't vote. So this isn't okay, this is a big contradiction, and it's not okay to say that you want the same rights, but uh, they don't want to vote. Now, moving on to the criteria, integration. Let's first talk about discrimination. So these people are discriminated today, and this is a problem. And we must solve it. And why are they discriminated? Because we don't know uh, nothing about them. And how could we know something about them if, if we can't interact with them? Uh, we will see, even if we, we don't want to discriminate them, we will discriminate them by not talking to them because we don't know their language, and they don't know our language. So it's easier for them to know the language, and then everything will be okay. Now, moving on to the countries with more languages. What do they give us the example of Switzerland. So what do they propose is that all countries should have 150 lang uh, uh, national languages. Is that okay? Is it, is it, it's okay to, uh, to make uh, a national language for every migrant? of different nation nationality? No, it isn't. So that's why we tell you today that it's very okay to put a language test because that way we could assure that uh, if they have, uh, if they really have a problem, they can go to the police and tell them and explain them what happened. Uh, if, uh, if they know the language, they can use their rights because it's useless to give them rights if they don't understand them and don't know them. Uh, they need to understand the language in order to understand your rights, in order to know your rights, in order to go to the doctor, in order to be a doctor, in order to work or whatever. So now, uh, what I told you today is that they brought no, no disadvantages to our plan. They just told us that uh, they should have the same rights, but they contradicted themselves. I told you why. Uh, and I showed you why the uh, clash area was won by us. But I would also want to remind you that we have more advantages 
like a functional democracy, functional society, functional economy, because they can communicate better with their boss or their uh, workmates, and so on and so forth, and no segregation. So please uh, affirm the motion. Thank you. I will present you with three clash points. The first one about land, where my, uh, what's more important, language or contribution. The second point about functional societies, and the third point about the rights to vote. So, first point, the, what's more important, the language or the contribution? What the affirmative team has said is actually the language is the most important thing in or for a uh, country and the society to develop, and uh, in order for the migrants to develop these societies, uh, societal values. But what the negative team has actually proven is that migrants contribute, they contribute, they work, they pay taxes, they respect the laws, so they contribute to the economy, and this is far more important than actually uh, what the affirmative team was saying, and with this, uh, with the fact that they are contributing to uh, the state where they are actually living, this is why, uh, the reason why they should gain the citizenship. And when they gain the citizenship, with time, they will learn the language. And why actually this happens? Right now, now I'll explain you why my grants right now may not know the language. Because right now they're seen from the natives as low class citizens. They're seen as someone, there is a huge gap between the rights that migrants have and the rights that citizens have. And because of this, and uh, while on the other side, what migrants do is that they complement the citizens. They do the jobs that natives don't want to do, they tr the treaty jobs. So, like we explained, they're contributing to society and yet they're not able to learn the language because they're far from accepted. And if actually, when they gain citizenship, what will happen? They will have the same rights as the citizens, they will be citizens, and with this in time, they will learn the language and say they will have the same rights and they will not be seen as low class anymore, so they will be able to do this. And moving on to my second point about functional societies. What the formative team was saying is that actually there can't be an economical development when people don't understand each other and when they cannot communicate in the same language. But there are examples with Canada, with uh, Switzerland, that actually have more than one official language and that are far uh, from not developed. So uh, we have the examples where these countries are actually one of the main economies in the world that also not only great economies but have great social welfare beyond having just one language and they function well. So the fact that if there can't be an economic development and people don't speak the same language is not true. And we also can uh, have the example with Greece. So we know that uh, in Greece what happens is there is right now a huge problem with the economical situation. And what this leads to also is having problem with the social uh, welfare of the society. So uh, when the migrants contribute to the economical welfare, in the same time they contribute to the social welfare as well. Because when there is good so uh, economical situation, then there is a good economic, uh, social situation as well. And you we can see from Greece what happens when there is not a good economical situation. And then moving on to my third point about the right to vote. So what the affirmative team has said is that actually uh, that 
if migrants become, uh, know the language and when they are citizens, they will be able to do the right thing and when they will vote, they will vote for the right party and such things. But only if a person knows the language, that doesn't necessarily mean that he knows the history of the politics in that state, that he knows what happened before, and that uh, he only can listen to uh, parties fighting among each other and saying different things about each other, but that doesn't mean that he is able to make the right decision. And what we uh, actually stand for is that if migrants become citizens, in time uh, they will be learn the language because they will have the same rights and they will be able to uh, fit well in the society and when they learn the language in time they will be able to learn the history of the politics of the state and with it they will be able to make the right decision while voting so it's not just to know the language in order to make the right decision it needs more you need to know also uh, the situation uh, where uh, in the country uh, so also uh, if they learn uh, what the negative theme also stands for is that the most important thing is the contribution migrants contribute in more than one way and migrants contribute to the economy by working this was proven uh, this was uh, we agreed with the affirmative team on the process that migrants contribute uh, to the economy and when we know that when there is a good economy in the states that will also lead to social welfare to good social situation so migrants uh, contribute in any way for the uh, countries that are not harmful in any way and they should be given citizenship so uh, they should be given citizenship although may, they not, may not know the language because we know that in time they will do so because they want to integrate and uh, for all these reasons I beg you to oppose the motion. Yeah, we should turn the off. You know how? Uh, Maybe that stops it. Yeah.